about you. And you can keep forgetting. That's our secret, right? Don't you remember the promise you made when we met? Hmm. Sure, how could I forget? What's wrong with Chusaka today? Chusaka, why are these screws bothering you so badly? What's with you? Leave them alone already. Will you just calm down? You're gonna destroy my plane. Again, I'm not letting you go. Oh, please, don't be afraid. I'm not gonna hurt you too. I'll just ask you one question and let you go. <sighs> Nolik, we can't. Don't worry about it. Quit your staring. Ask your question, boy. No way you can talk. Just, just, just tell me, who are you? Fixies. That's all. We answered. Now you let us out. Oh, wait. But what's it mean that you're sixties? That's already question number two. You promised to let us out, didn't you? I'm sorry. You can leave now. Zenka, it's fine. I can see from his look that we can trust him. Uh, all right. We'll tell him. You gotta swear that you don't tell anyone else. I swear it. <laughs> Fixies. We're the little people that live inside of machines and appliances and take care of them. Fixing them, cleaning them, and oiling them. Humans never suspect us. They think that if something breaks and then suddenly starts working again, that it happened all by itself. Well, nothing happens by itself. It happens because we, the Fixies, are living inside. Yes, without the Fixies, humans would have so many more problems with their machines. That's awesome. And so what are your names? That's already question number three. You can call me Nolik, and her name is Simka. And my name's Tom Thomas. Will you come back over? Oh, well. Uh, I was this close to becoming the first kid in the whole world to make friends with the Fixies. I thought you guys would never come back over. And we didn't plan on coming back. But then we thought it'd be really great to be the only Fixies in the whole world, who are friends with the only kid in the whole world, who is friends with the Fixies. Ah! And who has told no one about us. The Fixies do everything they can do to hide from humans. They are afraid that if humans discovered Fixies, they would hunt them down and capture them and start keeping them in cages just like pets. And worse than that, they would take them into their laboratories and start examining them under microscopes, even conducting scientific experiments on them. Or suppose that humans thought we'd do all their work for them, and so they decided that they didn't have to take care of their appliances any longer. 
Well then, let me tell you this. If humans decided that they didn't have to clean or fix their own appliances, then not even the Fixies will be able to stop them from breaking no matter what they do. That's why the Fixies are very smart to hide from humans. Okay then, I'll write about someone else. I have the very best friend ever. Period. When something's broken, he repairs it. He's the one and only No. The one and only Nolan. They need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Shh. The eco tester. Are you ready to see my new invention? I just can't wait to show you what it does. Whoa, what is it? An eco-tester. And what is it for? This device lets you check vegetables or fruit, so you'll know if they're safe to eat. <laughs> to grow apples, tomatoes, or melons faster and bigger, people add chemical fertilizers to the soil. But there's a problem if too much of these chemical fertilizers is used. When there's too much of them, the harmful chemicals get inside the fruits and vegetables, and that makes them very dangerous to eat. An eco-tester is a special device that quickly shows how much of these harmful chemicals have gotten inside of the food. And if the reading is too high, that means you shouldn't eat it. As you can see, the eco-tester shows that this apple is good. Well, let's see. Look. This one is safe, too. Ugh, it's not interesting this way. <laughs> These apples are all safe. Now let me take this delicious apple and, um, make it bad. <laughs> we will inject this apple with a harmful amount of nitrates. How come? What do you mean, how come? So we can see how the eco-tester works. So you see, the eco-tester clearly shows this apple is poisonous and can't be eaten. Is it only for apples or for any kind of fruit? Any fruit or vegetable. <gasps> I can get a watermelon to show you. <gasps> Could it really be true that watermelons can have nitrates too? Of course they can have nitrates. Humans often act without any concern for nature. The waste from factories, airplanes, cars and cities causes tremendous damage to nature. Species of plants and animals disappear. Air, water, and soil become polluted. And many other kinds of ecological problems appear. And humans shouldn't think that ecological problems are just nature's problems. Because when humans harm nature, they are also harming themselves. People breathe in the dirty air, drink polluted water, and eat food grown in soil contaminated with chemicals. If humans don't want to drink milk filled with poisons, and they want to eat ecologically clean fruits and veggies, then they must learn to treat nature as their friend. Hey, why don't we ugh, test these apples ourselves? Ugh. Nolik, help me out. I don't care. That apple's poisoned with nitrates. Oh, apples. <gasps> mm. Elisa, don't eat that. Uh, oh. Lisa, Lisa, Elisa, stop. Uh, please sit down. What? You bit into it? Yes, and what? Uh, oh, no. It's poisoned. What? <laughs> Do you have trouble talking? Oh, yeah. You feel faint. Oh, I'm fainting. Oh. Elisa, hang in there. What? There's no poison.
in an that apple she ate. Oh, my assistant. Oh, no. I've poisoned her. Oh, oh, oh Lisa, please. There was no poison in that apple. Oh, no. He didn't hear us. What should I do? This is I know how to make him hear. Hello? It's an emergency. It's a case of, of poisoning. Not me. I poisoned someone. Yes, with an apple. Fire. I mean, poison. Oh. Professor, this apple has no poison in it. The bad one rolled away onto the floor. Did it really? This is just fantastic news. Can you see me, Elisa? I can't see anything. How's that? I see you. I can see you. I can see again. I have great news. There's no poison at all in this apple. Are you sure? It's perfectly fine. Here, take a look. The eco-tester shows that there are no harmful chemicals inside. It's wonderful news. This is one excellent apple. And nutritious. <gasps> this appliance of yours is simply wonderful. Now she'll say he's a genius. <laughs> Professor, you are a genius. Thank you for saving my life. Oh, it was nothing. Actually, it was Nolik. He saved her life. I did? Dropping the watermelon was your idea, wasn't it? Ah, you're right. I saved her life. <laughs> Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The video call. Turn on the camera right away. It's me, Simka. Just as I expected. Nolik, why aren't you in school? School? It started? No, but you'll be late if you don't hurry. I'm on my way. Simka, is that really your fixie school? Um, well, actually, it's the laboratory where Professor Eugenius works at. He lets us have our school here. Who's that, Simka? Look. Is that the professor? Where? Oh, come on, Tom Thomas. That's the manipulator. Who? Not who. What? It's a mechanical arm. For real? Oh, please show me some of the other things you've got. But how can I show you? Come on, with the camera. Computers and tablets are able to connect with one another through the Internet. That's why you can talk to another person on your computer like you're talking on the phone. And if the computer has a video camera, then it's possible to send not only sound through the Internet, but video as well. That's why it's called a video call. With video calls, it's possible to talk to your friends, to see them, and to show them all the things you can see yourself. All right, take a look. <laughs> Over here we have uh, chemistry equipment. Uh, and over here... Hey, Tom Thomas, it's good to see you. Wow, you flew there so fast. Nola, get out of the way. You're blocking the view of the lab. I'm not blocking the view. Stop it! Go away! You go away! You go Tom Thomas, what are you watching? Uh, is it time to turn into screws? Too late. He already spotted us. It's just a cartoon about these funny little guys. Can I watch with you? Nah, it's boring, Dad, and I've already seen it. Next, that blue guy. He starts jumping. Watch. Now what? I see run. Start jumping. Make it cartoony. Now that red-headed character will sing. Watch. La 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 Then she starts dancing. La 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 These guys really are funny. And here are the super fast moves. That was funny. I gotta get going. 
That's all. You can rest. My dad went out. <laughs> I'll get you, Tom Thomas. What are you doing over there, huh? Watching a movie. But why on my computer? Sorry, Professor. Yeah, will you forgive us? So how is it any good? Uh-huh. It's a super funny one. Really? Yeah. You see that boy there? He's gonna start waving his arms around like a maniac. <laughs> he also crows like a chicken. Cock-a-doodle-doo! And now the boy's gonna go in and chew paper. Do this all at once. Hmm. A movie. That's what we're watching here, right? People have always been interested in seeing what's going on outside of where they are. And with the invention of video transmission, it's now possible to see what's going on almost anywhere. Now, without leaving your home, you can see what's happening on another street or even in some far corner of the world. With the help of video calls, doctors can help their colleagues perform complicated surgeries. Teachers can give lessons by video, and scientists can take part in video conferences. With video, you can watch a live theater performance in another country. And even in outer space, an astronaut can feel right at home just chatting away with friends and family. And it's not just for astronauts, either. Now almost every tablet and phone here on Earth has video in it. Introducing Tom Thomas. Nice to meet you there, son. And I'm Professor Eugenius, so I guess you're also a friend of the Fixies. Yeah, only it's a secret. My friend, that's a secret the two of us share. And you know, keeping secrets is what friends do. Daisy! MP3s and TV screens, even roller coasters. Without them, clocks stop ticking. Without them, lights go out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The bee. jam straight from out of the jar. Because it tastes so good. Oh, a bee! <gasps> Shoo! Get out of here! Leave it alone! It's just a plain old bee! Well, I was bitten by one of those plain old bees once. Ugh. Tom Thomas! Don't do it! Go away, you pest! Flies are pests. Bees are very helpful and useful. How can a bee ever help us out? Bees are hard workers. They are constantly collecting nectar from flowers. Flying from flower to flower, bees transport pollen on their bellies. Thanks to this process of pollination, flowers produce fruit and seeds. In other words, bees help plants reproduce. The bees use the nectar they collect to make that delicious sweet honey loved by kids of all ages. And bee honey is not only delicious, it's also nutritious. So, I'm still afraid of it. What if it bites me? Bees don't bite, by the way. They sting ya. I'm gonna show ya. Don't! The bee's the one who should be afraid, you tyrant. Yeah, you let it go, tyrant. Why are you calling me names? Who's stopping her? She can fly away if she wants. We need to show her the way out. Well, how? Here, little bee. Fly this way. Why don't you try going? <laughs> then what can I say?
Two socket, don't move. It'll sting you. It doesn't want to sting. Both of you like to eat sweets. You like eating jam, and so does the bee. Why don't you carry Two socket to the window? Go on, fly. No, that's not going to work. You need to go and get more jam. Here, little bee. Yum, yum. Go on and fly. You're free. Let her eat first. Don't be greedy. I'm not being greedy. If she eats, she can make honey out of your jam. Long ago, people could only collect honey by destroying the nests of wild bees. And that went on until someone came up with the idea of taming those insects. They started by leaving enough honey for the bees to survive through the winter. People took care of bees in these hollows until they learned to build small houses for them called beehives. And a town made of these bee houses is called an apiary. Bees live and work together in the beehives making honey, while beekeepers take care of the bees and collect the honey. Bees are real team players. They tell each other where the best flowers grow. Do you know how they do it? One of the bees does a dance. And then the rest of the bees watch the dance and learn where they need to fly. You poor thing. Tom Thomas tired you out. I told you there's nothing to be afraid of. You see? She's just so nice and kind. I'm not afraid of her. She wouldn't let me eat my jam, that's all. Well, now it's time for you to fly away. Uh, whoa! She's playing rough here. I want to try. Uh-uh, Nolik. You're too little. You'll have to grow to do this job. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm down now. Now let's fly. Hey, Simka, the window's back there. I can see that without you. So how can I get you to turn around? Cool. Hooray! <laughs> She's listening to me. Don't miss the window. Now! So long, honeybee! Tideesh! Tom Thomas, do you have any more of that jam left? Yeah. What for? Bring it here. We'll get more bees to fly in. How come? What do you mean, how come? Because it's my turn for a bee ride. Please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their 